High Desert is a comedy drama starring Patricia Arquette on Apple TV. The series began its first season run May 17th and concluded with its eighth episode titled I Need a Hero, June 21st, 2023. On this podcast, we discuss the most recent installment of a different series every show. Without further ado, welcome to another edition of today's episode. So last night, I watched two Apple series finales for the f- their first seasons. The Silo season finale mm-hmm. and the High Desert season finale, which, which I think came better. out a day mm-hmm. beforehand. They were both great. I like both really? of them. Okay. This show, this episode, I'm giving an eight. I haven't seen any other episodes up till now, but I can tell you it is um, a sardonic comedy like Poker Face or Barry or Raising Arizona, Twin Peaks, uh, and Better Call Saul. Those were the comparisons I made. As you were going into the season finale, I thought it only right that I watched the first episode of the series. And I actually would compare it to something like Outrageous Fortune because that de- it deals a lot with like the family and really Peggy reminds me a lot of the main character from Outrageous Fortune. But again, I only ever saw the pilot for this show. Yeah, so. and you got the benefit of being able to be introduced to all these characters mm-hmm. while I was playing <laughs> catch up. And I know I didn't get it all, but I did figure out that it was a murder mystery where Peggy, who is sort of a fixer, but she does a bit of everything, is hired to figure out what happened to Guru Bob's wife, Donna, and track down where she is, if she's still alive. Or yeah. even if she's dead. Yeah. She's she's a PI, and we should learn that in the first episode. She gets the job for being a PI because she goes to the, is it the brother of Everybody Loves Raymond. Hey, Bruce? I didn't see the first episode. Bru- no, but Bruce. Bruce is, who, yes, yes, yeah. he's the brother. And, and so she decides to start working for him, and then uh, she says that she's going to be able to get a lot of traffic for him because he's like a lawyer or, or something along those lines, and therefore that's kind of the I know he has a connection episode. to law enforcement. That's made clear even yes. within the previously the question i have for you is because it felt like this this finale sprinted through like we got to see all the characters and everything got wrapped up Doesn't i felt me. like the first six or seven episodes of it may have dragged no 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 every single review i said sometimes there's just too much going on with this show okay it, it will always like start with like, i thought a quick maybe pace. they had saved it all till the ending and then they were just like we're gonna kill off people we're gonna get things taken care of and it's just gonna be crazy the first scene of the show yeah back in 2013 her house gets raided mm-hmm. while her whole entire family is there is her mom still alive i assume yeah then? we do see the mom and mm-hmm. we also see uh her, her sister. siblings the sisters yes. uh, you recognize brother. the sister right no, actually, I didn't. The sister is the girl from Dodgeball. From oh, from two thousand. And she's married to Ben Stiller, who produced okay, this show. Okay, okay, so that was Christina Taylor. Yeah, Diane, the Wayne singer, Zoolander, Dodgeball, and then also the thing that really stood out to me was how many people are from different shows: Patricia Arquette, Severance, Weruche, Opia, I May Destroy You. Yeah, no, no, we'll get into the cast, but you were saying the first scene is is busy. Yeah, yeah. the SWAT team is breaking into the house, and not just through the doors, like through the window panes as well. Mm-hmm. They are just destroying it. And Why? it seems like because they know that there's pot there. They know that oh, there's it's drug, a drug there. Bus. Yes. Because, and so, so like, like weed. Denny and also Peggy's mom and Peggy are trying to like throw weed down the drain and just trying to get rid of it as much as they can. Yeah. And then like every, a ton of people end up getting arrested for it. So her whole Denny. family is this huge drug bring yes. operation. That is not what I picked up. In fact, I thought the sister was pretty straight edge like that. She didn't participate in that type of stuff well Even, diane diane it's not diane diane and stuart who are you like you were saying peggy's sister and brother they didn't really they were there but they didn't have anything to do with it it's really denny who is uh peggy's yeah. husband who so, goes to jail and, that, Dillon, right? and that's why it reminded me so much of outrageous fortune because the same thing happens there and by now in the series by the finale matt Dillon is out of jail denny is out of jail mm-hmm. and he actually helps peggy and peggy is also a recovering um addict but yeah. I don't think it's weed that she's on. I think because because her sister mentioned methadone, which she is was usually also for doing like, acid. Yeah. Well, that's like opioids more so for like that's what they were using for dope sick and what I saw them using in um, uh, what, what's the Happy Valley. And speaking of Happy Valley, I think Patricia Arquette, if they ever made that show an American version <laughs> of it, she would be perfect for it. She kind of looks like the lady in that, and she has the same like I don't know seriousness yet gruffness and sarcasticness that that lady imbibes. Like it's, it's just it. it 
would be a perfect mix. I think she has so much respect around the industry because every single person who signed on to this show learned that she was going to be on it first uh -huh. before they ended up actually signing on. I wasn't actually like a big like fan of hers in Severance though. I thought that like I really enjoyed Adam Scott and the rest of the cast, but she was probably my least favorite character in that show, which is it's just funny because it's also Apple. But like you were saying, the first episode sounds like it had a lot going on in the first scene. Did it continue? Like, how yeah, did that, what we, was the cliffhanger of the first episode? The cliffhanger of the first episode is Matt Dillon does not sign the divorce papers. Like then I it, said, she takes acid when she goes to meet Matt Dillon in jail. And that's kind of the first time that we see him uh, since the first scene of the show. Yeah. And she's trying her hardest to get him to sign these divorce papers. And then instead, uh, when she goes to her car and she sees what he wrote, he wrote Frank Sinatra. Okay. So so yeah. he, so she so he's we see I Peggy think, a I lot in this episode being disrespected. What was the um what was the show that we did alert missing persons? Yeah. Where he did something similar like um where he was being shown divorce papers at the beginning and he was refusing to sign them. Uh the point is what what you're talking about that storyline doesn't matter. <laughs> None of it stays the same. Okay. So you didn't even meet Guru Bob. No, you didn't. Okay, so what's happening here is that, again, Guru Bob's wife goes missing, but she has connections. Her brothers and the rest of her family are part of the New York Gotchis, which is like a gang member family. Mm -hmm. Think of, like, the Godfather, right? Mm -hmm. But they're kind of goofy, too. They're, they're the gangs that you would see kind of in Barry or Twin Peaks, like Hank and stuff. Now that you mentioned that, actually, we do see Guru Bob for one minute. I think that uh, he's supposed to be really rich right but yeah but he's also kind of like a flake like he uh, just come came back from burning man that's when what happened to his wife happened okay and that's disclosed in this episode so by the time that the finale rolls around though nick and leo who are donna's brothers have kidnapped um <laughs> peggy they've also kidnapped guru bob who's high as a kite he's completely <laughs> out of it but they think that peggy was in on donna's murder peggy found out that donna was dead and that she was found with a drone outside, I think, Guru Bob's house in the sand. And she's just hanging out there. Like, that's that's where her body yeah, is. Yeah, I know that Donna was missing and that there was, like, an a, a ward out for her, like, $75,000 if she was found. Yeah, but she found her and she wanted that reward money. Mm -hmm. um, but Nick and Leo were, like, assuming that for some reason Peggy and Guru Bob were having an affair or something. When, really, they didn't even know each other. So they bring them out into the desert, a la um, Mr. Robot. Uh, you know, when they're like digging their yes, own graves right. and Better Call Saul. And so just like in Better Call Saul, Peggy is tasked with having to talk her way out of a situation. And the thing is, she does have just the smallest bit of leverage because what happened was she stole a painting from Nick and Leo's place before they dragged her out there. And she was about to sell it for, I think, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. A lot of money. Maybe it was just $75,000. Yes. So there was a painting in the first episode that was made by Picasso. And I believe that was supposed to be like $5 million, she says. Yeah, here's the thing, though. It wasn't really Picasso's painting. It was a lookalike that Donna had made. It was Donna's work that she had stolen. But it passed off so well that she was going to give it to the sleazy guy who was going to then sell it to someone else. So the show foreshadows that in the first episode because even Bruce, uh, Peggy goes to Bruce and tells him about this, and he's like, it could just be a lookalike, but Peggy is for sure that it was made by Picasso. So it's one of those things, I guess the show actually told you about it. Yeah, you but she and Guru were going to sell this painting, but then it turns out that they get kidnapped, so she tells the goons about it, Nick and Leo, right? Mm -hmm. They're like Sal and uh, Sonny, they're like Jules and Vincent, they're like the guys from Get Shorty. <laughs> they're, they're so goofy, and they start fighting between themselves whether or not to kill these people just to get revenge for their sister, or to take the money first, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And so one of them wants to do that, one of them doesn't, so one of them stands with a gun towards uh, both their heads, Peggy and Guru uh, Bob's heads, and that's when they like start fighting and then they kill each other. Literally, Wait. the brothers <laughs> get into such a fight that they kill each other. Like, they kill each other on purpose, or was this an accident? Like, It's sort of on purpose, out? sort of an accident. You know, one of those <laughs> situations <laughs> where they were getting into a big argument, and then they got so mad at each other that one shot one, and then the other one shot the other one in the head, and they both died. <laughs> 
It was so an all star moment in television. Like, it seems like it, it was, worked out in the it end. It was for... great. That's why I'm giving this show an eight out of ten. It was hilarious because those are like the big bads, and the other big bads we see in the first scene of this episode, which is almost as funny because what happens is apparently Peggy also had a problem with this guy named Armin and his daughter Heather. Mm-hmm. Heather looks like the mountain from Game of Thrones. She is the muscle. <laughs> so she's built. She's no. I mean, she's very very big. Um, and she, or like her thing is that they, Peggy had to give them her trailer, I think, yeah. in exchange for money because they were like cutting her. And I, I'm not exactly so what, what happened. happened what yeah. happened last episode mm-hmm. was that Peggy's uh, husband, Denny, did this bank robbery. Yes. And uh, by this point, I think uh, you said Armin, Armin and his yeah. daughter already had Peggy because she went to go get pills in the sixth episode and it ended up being a setup where they were kidnapping her because they wanted well, no, no, the no. painting. Armin and Heather first kidnapped Peggy, but then Peggy let them have the trailer. So it was all good. And then these other blokes, Nick and um, uh, Leo, were the ones no. who kidnapped kidnapped Peggy. So the way she got out of it, though, from what I understand, is by giving them the trailer, she calls in a tip to the police saying that someone murdered someone <laughs> and that they they look like Heather. So when the police see them on the road, right. that's where the cop right. okay, yeah. stops the trailer people and he gets in, he gets out and he asks them to leave and then they are like refusing to leave the car and then Armin turns on Britney Spears as toxic. This is totally like a Barry episode. Heather gets out of the car and all we hear is like screaming as she's killing the cop. And then we hear this random gunshot go off. And clearly she like is still able to kill the cop and mm-hmm. she gets back in the car and she's like, he tried to shoot me. And Armin's been dancing this whole time to Britney's toxic. <laughs> and he turns to her and like a walking dead or uh, again, better calls or, or be- breaking bad with um, he has a bullet in his head. And he just dies. <laughs> Wait, so he's gone. Yes, because that random <laughs> bullet shot ended up killing her dad. Okay, Armin. so that's where the Walking Dead comes in. Yes, no. So what Peggy did was she told Bruce and William to describe Bob's car if the police came snooping around. Yes. And that's what they did. And that's how uh, the cop, I forgot they named him in the episode, but that's how he was able to find them. Keep in mind, this is all in 30 minutes. So right. we got this crazy stuff going on. Guru Bob, who's still high as a kite, explained before uh, Nick and Leo died how Donna actually did die. They had gotten into an argument where he was insulting her artwork she felt like and uh, he had just come back from Burning Man and she like threw his award down the stairs and then uh, I think like within the argument he sort of like pushed her and then she fell backwards over the stairs all the way down them and then like uh, impaled herself on the uh, the award (laughs) on the award next to a parrot and uh, and then he, I guess, just left the body the parrot outside. Has been a central figure to this show, actually. I believe it was like episode six or seven, mm-hmm. where uh, they they knew there was more to Donna's death or her disappearance because the parrot was still around, and she loved that parrot. Well, he starts freaking out, so he says all these like, "Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh something!" And then the parrot just repeats it. So <laughs> I assume that that's where they knew that the parrot was involved in some yeah. way. Um, but but it's really funny because Guru Bob and Peggy now having survived this, and they're just next to their graves, Guru Bob turns to Peggy with a gun, with the gun that he's picked up and says, okay, where I know that Ketchel's not real. Ketchel's the guy who's going to buy the artwork. And so he's asking, I think, for money or the painting or something or for her to just get out of the car so he can leave her. And then she convinces him that Ketchel actually is real. But this is where the show goes even crazier because instead of just going to meet this art dealer, apparently she's in charge of this place called Pioneer Town, P-Town as she calls it. And so there's this whole yes. group of people who dress up in these old timey 1800s yes. clothes who are having like a fair that day. That's 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 where she worked in the first episode. After the drug raid, ten years later in 2023, she invites her uh, sister and her brother to come because she's she's working in one of those towns that is obviously fake, but almost like Westworld, where it's like it's real life entertainment. Yeah, in real and life. she's helped out so many people that like all this time, Denny has been calling people trying to figure out where his wife is. And also Nia slash uh, Carol has come back with her like uh, a stepdaughter or something to to also find Peggy. And uh, she's teamed up with Bruce. So like there's all these moving parts going on. But Peggy makes her way back to Pioneer Town where the deal's going to go down. But that's when Denny shows up at Pioneer Town 
and he finds uh, Roger, who's also, I guess, one of Peggy's friends. Yeah. And uh, and they work out a situation where um, he's going to pretend to be Ketchel. And so when Peggy and Bob Guru roll into town um, in the middle of the fair, uh, and and then her sister brings her the painting, and they have a nice little sisterly moment where she's like confessing to having ki- let her mom die, not intentionally, but she had gone off to get high. So there's like drama infused in everything. There was yeah, in the first episode, Peggy was getting really mad or sister saying that she was clean but i think the whole entire thing in the first seven episodes was that she was doing a ton of drugs yeah and she was completely lying about all that yeah so like with again another reason why patricia arquette and uh her happy valley role like if she chose to pick that one up would be good because there's also a lot of sisterly tension there Mm -hmm. um point is bob guru kind of gets screwed over he runs into the desert everybody laughs at him but owen the guy who's running pioneer town Owen, yes i've been waiting for you to speak about him because he's kevin from kevin can fuck himself I really wanted to hear about your thoughts of him specifically because he, I, yeah. He plays sort of the overcommitted antagonist where he's not a bad guy. He's not like the people trying to kill her, but he goes in there when Peggy's not showing up to Pioneer Town and he's like, she let us down. She promised us Hamilton in the middle of the desert and this is what we got. <laughs> Someone's got to go in the giant bazooka over here. That So they're going to rocket someone out of those like cannonballs. Yeah, you know? it was a cannon. Yes. Yeah. And so she... <laughs> Apparently, he was under the impression Peggy was going to do it. But since Peggy wasn't there, he was like trying to work everybody up until someone volunteered. And then he promised fifty dollars. And that's where I guess another character that we're supposed to know, Tammy, says that she'll do it. But she faints Tammy, before she gets so in. So Tammy was the person that uh, Guru Bob was dating in the first episode. But I believe like by the second episode, they're already broken up. And Tammy was supposed to be very smug about it because Guru Bob apparently was so rich. She felt like she didn't need to work for the rest of her life and was kind of being uh, really... Uh, confident and uh, annoying to Peggy. Huh. Well, it seems like they were friends at this point. Tammy didn't seem to mind. Like, she was just... Oh, interesting. Okay, maybe there was a character change. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, she was just working there, and then she was like, oh, for $50, I'll go in the cannon, but then she faints before she can do anything. Peggy shows up, she works out this deal, she has this confession with her sister, and then she's like, you know what? Fuck it. She gets in the cannon, and like, I think she's feeling... So Peggy gets in the cannon. ...really depressed. This this reminds me of Take Me Home Tonight with the big golden ball that Mm -hmm. uh, Topher Grace, by the end of the movie, gets into. It's almost like the same thing. I haven't seen the movie, so okay. <laughs> but she gets in there and she's wearing the cape, and you can tell it's like one of those moments where the the central character is having like not an existential crisis, but she's like just so much has happened in her world, and she's been kidnapped twice in the last twenty four hours, and she doesn't know what's going to happen next. So she's just like, whatever happens, happens, and it goes like three two, one, we hear this like weird gunshot of probably the cannon and that's where it goes to black and that's where the season ends oh, that's where and the it's just ends? so busy <laughs> this whole episode was just a whole toxic bit of fun but like uh, I, again Britney Spears toxic but like Silo was great too so that's why I think Apple the last two days kicked it out of the park so I'm really glad that you like this show because I really enjoyed the pilot uh-huh. but the reviews for it have been uh, not so great as a 6.2 on IMDb, a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, 81% audience score so that's pretty good but uh, you have a lot of people complimenting the acting particularly patricia arquette but they say that the story sometimes gets gets too lost in itself to really be anything great and like we watched the first episode and the last episode which would be the best ones if that's the (laughs) case so maybe the middle did like fall into a sludge or or it just like started getting really slow but i will say this the title of this episode is i need a hero and i need to explain that because it's one of owen's lines when he's trying to get someone to go into the cannonball he's (laughs) like i need a hero (laughs) so so i was expecting the song to come in it didn't the other character that i should bring up is that guru bob (laughs) the other character i should mention is guru bob was played by the guy from homeland so it was really weird to to see him there it feels like everybody was recognizable and also like ben stiller and patricia arquette are having like some sort of situation at apple where they're just going to be in everything sort of like jason um jason uh bateman in netflix like he's just (laughs) producing everything it feels like ben stiller's just their guy not only are the actors recognizable the composer has worked for a lot of different shows for all mankind snowfall fargo the umbrella academy star Trek, i know who you're talking about 
because we've talked Utopia. about him before. Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. He did before. counterpart. Um, they got Jay Roach, and it seemed like they really wanted him. He has been the director for a lot of different uh, comedy movies, Austin Powers and Gold Member, Meet the Fockers, Dinner for Schmucks, and then he kind of transferred into a uh, drama, just like Ben Stiller. By yeah. the end of 2010s, doing films like Trumbo and Bombshell. Originally, Ben Stiller was going to direct the first episode of the series, but after Patricia Arquette, uh, all three creators, Nancy Fitchman, Katie Ford, and Jennifer Hope House, went to Jay Roach. He was like, I'll, I'll direct one episode. And then he was like, can I direct two? three and then after a while they're just like you know what you have you have full reign and mm -hmm. because of that he was like yeah this was a lot like directing a movie because i literally directed the whole entire thing well this ending just felt very conclusive even though it left off with a cliffhanger you virtually got all the cast that you probably and you and you got those deaths and the funny deaths mm -hmm. and uh even uh heather she breaks back into peggy's house because she's so the man then she steals like an atv even like drives it off and then he's just like what the fuck <laughs> is happening Ethan, uh, apparently his dad's in jail now. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that, but we do get like a FaceTime of Ethan and then there's this nudist colony that goes on. I'm just trying to like throw everything that we got in this yeah, episode. Yeah, so Bernadette Peters, yeah. does she show up in the episode? She played the mom, but she actually is playing a dual role. In the backflash because the mom's dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they just showed that she, um, when she's confessing to her sister, had just gone off to get high that night and had. And the next thing that we see is the mom being trucked out on like one of those stretchers. Okay. So yeah. Um, but, but that's a downer way to end it. The, the interesting thing about the mom, though, is when I looked up her name, it was like people didn't know whether it was Rosalind or Rosalind uh, with, without the A or Ginger. So I have I guess Rosalind. She... Well, no, I think that Ginger is the dual role she's playing uh, because gotcha. Peggy Newman meets, I think, uh, in like the third or fourth episode, someone who looks exactly like her mom. Mm -hmm. And she's playing, again, like Outrageous Fortune with Antony Starr, a dual role. So it's not one of those situations like uh, the Truman Show where, <laughs> where, where he sees his dad again after years and years. And no, years. The, uh, the show is not based on a true story, but Peggy Newman, I believe, was based on Nancy Fitchman's sister, uh, who actually ended up becoming a PA and kind of lived a life that was similar to this. Oh, I never would have thought that this would be anything close to real. It's it's, it's when you see so the out of the realm of possibility. When you see the first episode, it makes more sense because I guess that one is grounded a little more in the, reality. Yeah, and it was cool seeing Brad Garrett again from, from Everybody Loves Raymond because the last thing I think I saw him in was Fargo. And he always brings like an element of comedy in there, but like more serious comedy than what you're used to and seeing in uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, yeah, so that's where I think we'll end it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye. Bye.